What's up you guys, it's Two Bricks, and I'm really excited today to break into the review game. This is my first ever LEGO set review, and it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time, uh, reviews that is, and I've just been waiting for the right set that um, I feel passionately about, that I would want to um, kind of take the time to really go over in depth and show and share with you guys, and give my thoughts and recommendations uh, as far as that goes. So, uh, obviously, you can probably tell that I have a favorable view of this set, seeing as how this is the one that I chose uh, based on my criteria. But going forward, I want to be doing a lot more set reviews since I do purchase a lot of LEGO for my own enjoyment, and uh, I you know, may as well share my thoughts with you guys so you know uh, what's good and what's not and what to buy and etc. So uh, the main kind of thing that I'm going to be looking at uh, is a bunch of different criteria and then leading, uh, kind of feeding all of that into a final conclusion of, is this set worth buying? Um, because LEGO is an expensive hobby and it's something that I think uh, leads a lot of people to have rightfully um, concerns over where they put their money and if a set is gonna be ultimately worth it. So uh, I'm gonna dive into the set with you guys today. We're gonna take a look at all the different uh, variations. This is everything that comes with the set, including the spent sticker sheet, and you also get this little box of extra pieces, box not included. This is just my handy dandy way of keeping them uh, all together. I'll be showing you guys those at the end separately. Uh, and then I'll give you a look at all of the kind of alternate sub builds that you can do with this to customize it to, um, I want to say there's actually four different variations included uh, for each of the different appearances of the DeLorean in the movie. So um, yeah, I'm really excited. So let's get into it. All right, so here is the main model. Here is the extremely hefty instruction booklet um, that comes with it. It's got a nice, you know, out of time uh, with the, uh, <laughs> I love the spinning um, license plate there at the end and they actually use the, uh, the actual Lego element, which I didn't notice when I first opened the set. So that's really cool. Um, and yeah, they just did a nice job of presenting it. They give you a lot of uh, information at the beginning here about the actual car and uh, the history of the prop, things of that nature. And then they also um, give you little factoids along the way. So as you're building the instructions every now and then, there will be a uh, something in here that'll just tell you a little obscure fact or something you may not know about the design of the actual car. So um, yeah, that's all very nicely produced and I really enjoyed going through that. I don't actually uh, keep my instruction manuals, but I do appreciate the effort that goes into them. So. That's really cool. Uh, that was the thud of it hitting the ground, <laughs> the encyclopedia that it is. And then uh, the next thing that I think is cool that you get with this is a UCS Ultimate Collector Series style plaque to display next to your minifigures, which I think is very nice. Uh, it's a sticker as per usual with these, and I actually applied mine a little bit crooked. Shame on me. Um, and it just gives you some you know, made up trivia here about the, uh, the car itself made by <laughs> Doc E. Brown Enterprises. I don't know, was, was Doc Brown, uh, did he have an incorporated uh, company there that was producing DeLorean time machines? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so some fun little facts there and a, a nice image of the um, of the car as well. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the actual minifigures. Um, first up, we get a brand new Marty. Uh, and he's got the awesome uh, side leg print here for the, for the classic shoes there, you know, for the... the uh, future look. So these are both Back to the Future 2 styled minifigures, if you can tell. Uh, Marty gets an alternate face, uh, which I really like. He's got the, the dual expression there. Very usable figure. And um, and yeah, I think just the outfit in general, I mean, if you, if you didn't know your Back to the Future stuff, I think this is a very usable figure in any kind of normal city layout diorama. Um, it's a really great um, kind of very, yeah, just very kind of uh, everyday looking figure to those who aren't fans of Back to the Future. And I think that's really great. And you know, super highly produced here with so much detail running all the way down the sides and the front of the, uh, of the legs there. There's a little kind of a non-printable zone in uh, LEGO minifigures. Doc Brown has the same thing here where you'd really want to see that print continue down into that little crease there of the ankles, but the, their printing processes just aren't able to do it. Uh, so they give us as much detail as they possibly can, and I think that's just fine. Um, yeah, and I also like the the subtle kind of texture there that they have on his vest. There's a little bit of a checkered design on the vest there that I think is really nice. It catches the light. And yeah, just a really, really well-produced figure. And the same goes here for Doc Brown with the um, super cool future shades from, from the far future of 2015. And um, he also has an alternate face there with his great Scott. Um, the timeline's about to explode 
kind of look on him on his face so I think that's really cool and I really like the the detail here on the um, especially like how the shirt pattern continues down there onto the uh, onto the hip print and then the way that this just all flows down into the legs to make it look like he's wearing his long coat and again really really subtle texture in here for like the the pants you know you have that the, the line work in there that's really 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 nicely done so um, two very very well produced figures for this set which I think you know it deserves this is an expensive set it costs 169.99 uh, US dollars which is what I paid for it and um, it's yeah I think that that's warranted so uh, here is the actual car itself, and these are all of the various accessories that come with it. I'm going to clear this away in a second and give you a look at the actual car, but um, this is the uh, the stuff here to kind of convert the car into the Back to the Future 2 with the Mr. Fusion, um, which you install in the back. This is the crate, which you install in the front, and this is the lightning rod here, which you can install into the back for the kind of end of Back to the Future 1, third act, kind of, um, you know, the big tension moment where they go back to the future. So um, these are the wheels that are included for the Back to the Future, the uh, the white walls uh, here with the, the red on the inside. I think that's, that looks really nice. And then you get your alternate license plate as well. Um, so let's get into the actual car itself and we'll look at some of the major action features and really cool details on the car itself. Here is the car itself, the DeLorean in all of its beautiful 80s glory. Um, I think that the design of the main car here is incredible i i really i've never done any of the uh, the lego large vehicle builds before um i'm predominantly somebody who's interested in play sets and minifigures um or you know sets that are minifigure scaled and so i've just never really been that uh hooked by any of these large cars but as soon as i saw this one something about it just told me i gotta buy this and i gotta build it and um, i'm really glad that it did because it is absolutely gorgeous the the actual building experience of putting this together from start to finish is so satisfying and so surprising in so many ways where it's it's in the best possible way when you're building a sub-assembly and you're just looking at this thing like what what am i building right now what is this and then you click it into place somewhere and it just and it just all makes sense and it's absolutely uh, glorious so for somebody who builds mocks and is into the design of lego and, and lego math and uh, strange connections and techniques this is a a wonderful piece um, it obviously can do all of the things that a DeLorean should be able to do from Back to the Future. Uh, the kind of big splashy action feature here is this big lever that you pull underneath which activates the wheels into flight mode and then they've included some clear bricks under here to um, allow it to hover so it can sit on the table with very low clearance actually with the, the wheels just off the ground. And I think, I mean, that that's obviously like the look, right, for, for a Back to the Future DeLorean, that's what you want to see. Um, they stick out an appropriate amount from the sides, and I think that just looks incredible. And how uh, how fluidly this was um, integrated with this very, very simple mechanism. It does rely on some rubber bands, but I feel like they aren't under a lot of tension. There are some sets in the past that have, um, I think, stressed rubber bands to the point where they're not going to last. I think these are going to last. And especially, um, they're in their more tense position uh, this way. Um, so if you if you just have the car in its regular kind of display um, you know, predominantly, I think you're going to get a lot of longevity out of these um, rubber bands. I was just trying to see here if I could activate the the wheels by just doing the tires. You can't do that, but uh, but if you set it um, this way into flight mode, you can you can reset it. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, why do that? You have a big red handle right here to pull, which is very very satisfying to do. Um, so that's really awesome, and that's something that I think uh, was essential to get right with this car. It's just like you know, it's it's the key thing that you think of when you imagine the DeLorean time machine. So A plus on that and um, the actual kind of technic structure and all of the underlying stuff that goes into that mechanism is I think the first four bags worth of stuff or f maybe five. And <laughs> for the longest time, it really doesn't look like you're building anything. It doesn't resemble a DeLorean. It, it resembles a lot of different interlocking gears and arms and technic pieces. And it's very, very fun when you start to see it, the shape come together and you start to place on the front uh, section here, you, you begin building this bumper and you're like, oh, here we go, we're, we're making a DeLorean. Um, then the next uh, key feature that I think had to be in here and which they dutifully got in was the gullwing doors. So those open up on both sides. They don't, uh, like you just see, they don't have the tension really required to stay up, which is um, kind of a bummer. Uh, I'm sure that there's a, a way to easily rig that so that you can 
you know have a piece that just holds it in place um, but they do have a kind of a realistic level of um, almost like the pneumatic um, doors would actually function where it, 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 they don't just fall down they kind of slowly ease back into place so that's nice but yeah it would have been cool to be able to pose it on display with just one door open just kind of you know beckoning Marty to get in and drive the car so that's kind of a, a little bit of a miss but I think it's it's understandable with how much stuff they had to pack into this design that that, that was something that couldn't be achieved um, I'm okay with it largely so I think that's fine um, another cool element here is that you have the the light brick on the inside there so you can see that shining that's for the flux capacitor and um, they have a cool parts usage in there with the grappling hook to represent the flux capacitor itself and then the light brick shines behind that um, and I think it looks really nice it's um it's about as good as I could really hope for I mean the, the element is in there it does light up and uh, it, it has a clear back sticker on the front of it so the some of the bubbles and dust and texture and things that naturally come with clear back stickers does interfere with the glow of it a little bit um, but it's pretty good and it also has a really satisfying um, kind of button feel with this little lever back here where they've uh, used one of those rubber uh, pieces to kind of give it that springy tension so it just it feels very satisfying to push um, the next thing that they really nailed is the overall detailing of the time machine ification of the DeLorean here so you have the um, the large kind of um, metallic strips that run all the way around the car up, uh, you know onto the underside here you have the the wires that run all through from the front right down through to the mm -hmm. or from the back down to the front um, they really, really captured all of that expertly, and I love the way that these um, these wire pieces are integrated in here. These are like the uh, classic kind of um, the the reins for horses. You know, they've kind of uh, they've recolored those in black, and they've uh, used it for that. So that's really, really effective. And the way that it just follows through and just plugs into the exact right spot with just enough tension in it, and th the fact that it kind of uh, makes its way the cable makes its way through here and there's just a, the exact right amount of space in there for everything to fit. It just feels so deluxe and so expertly done. And I did appreciate the inclusion of these um, treated silver pieces in here for the, they're kind of a, a more metallic silver than your standard for these elements that, um, you know, the ones that run around the front bumper here to kind of do the sciencey stuff, whatever, whatever Doc Brown made the car uh, have to do. It's kind of what catches the uh, electricity and um, and yeah, I think it was the right choice to especially differentiate it from the, the surface of the car to use that more metallic silver. It does have a little bit of inconsistency with the application. Some of it is a little bit patchy in places, but it's overall pretty good. I actually don't know what technique LEGO uses to get that silver on there. It looks like it's maybe sprayed. Um, but yeah, the, the consistency on there is just a little bit off. But again, it's, it's very minor and it catches the light really beautifully, as you can see as I turn them all around it really it really does give it a sheen that is nice um, so next up here we have all of the details in the back of the car uh, which are just again absolutely masterfully captured with all kinds of different lengths and types of hoses different thicknesses where they attach and it all feels absolutely fantastic and then the the, the kind of vent detailing back here the, the these grates um, look fantastic as well they're using these minifigure leg holder pieces that um, that you use to kind of seat a minifigure down into a ship or something. And uh, they're used to great effect back here. It really, really captures the look. Um, there's not really any kind of majorly fragile areas on the model. I would say that uh, one area is just under here, these um, small plate details on the back. Uh, sometimes you'll be wanting to push the car because you know you wanna, you wanna make it roll. And uh, if you accidentally touch the undersides of these, um, these little details, they can pop off. Um, but that's pretty good. I think it's, I mean, fairly acceptable for what it is but the rest um, the rest is all pretty sturdy and pretty well constructed and uh, as a, just a unit that you can just kind of grab and push around it it really holds its own very well um, the only other thing is this uh, these <laughs> side mirrors can lift up uh, which I suppose is a realistic detail but it's where I always want to pull the door up from and I, I always end up just accidentally <laughs> lifting the mirror instead before it lift the door up so that's kind of like a, a super minor gripe but it's again it's an incredible design and all of the the tolerances and the gaps and the the areas where all the parts come together are incredibly minimal and incredibly well fit so um, yeah it's just it's an absolute joy to put together so the final feature here is the opening 
uh, bonnet, as we people from England say. And it has a very nice kind of smooth um, actuation in here with uh, kind of a two, um, a double pointed uh, point of articulation with the arm in here so that it just kind of has this very nice, um, I don't exactly know, I'm, my mechanical terms are escaping me, but it just has a very smooth kind of dual motion to it when you lift it up. And on the inside here you have space for um, Marty's uh, hoverboard, which uh, this is just a stickered piece right here. And then uh, the plutonium crate, uh, crate as well. And that's got a lot of nice stickers on there as well. You can see there, you can uh, actually read what's on the stickers. And it looks great. I mean, it looks super authentic. It's everything that you could um, really want from a little prop like this. It's just, you know, it opens up. It's got the plutonium in it. And there you go. And there's space to place it in the trunk. And it works great. Um, I think one thing that really impressed me overall on this set was the graphic design work in the stickers. There are some LEGO sets where you just feel that the stickers are kind of, um, I don't want to say more like juvenile in their design, but they there's something about them where they don't quite capture the realism of what they're trying to add the detail to. And the the graphic design work in this set is, I mean, it's next level. Like, I mean, just looking at the the detail here on these uh, spokes for the for the hubcaps, I mean, it looks incredible. Uh, everything down to the the um, kind of screen cover here. I'm just trying to activate the light. Sorry, <laughs> one second. There you go for the um, for the flux capacitor. You know, uh, it it all just it all just really really works. And the uh, kind of heads up display area in here where we have all the all the different um, this is actually a printed element here, but all the different like little consoles in here for the the different uh, time destinations. It all looks absolutely immaculate, and it's very very highly detailed and super duper authentic to the film as well. So. Uh, I really, really appreciate the the work that the graphic design team put into this set um, because it really, I mean, it adds a lot. It adds a ton to the feel of the um, the overall kind of feel of the set as a high-end collector's item uh, and not just a toy. I did forget to show you the uh, out-of-time license plate here, which is super cool. And, um, and that is just a window frame piece that is mounted sideways. And then the secondary... Uh, yeah, the secondary piece there is just a replacement window insert that goes into there. So uh, let me convert the car into the uh, Back to the Future 2 and 3 versions, and then, um, yeah, we'll take a look at what those include. Okay, so to convert the car to the Back to the Future 2 version, which, um, or I guess also the uh, Back to the Future 1 epilogue version, where Doc Brown says we won't need roads, you take off all of this stuff right here. So th these are a couple of tube details from the back. This is the, I guess, uh, old fuel tank here where you'd place your pl plutonium and some little bits of kind of grating detail and uh, extra pieces here. So you take all of that off and then you build up this whole platform here which you um, add into the back where those kind of tubes and things were and then you add on the Mr. Fusion reactor on top of that. Uh, it's a really nice simple build for the the fusion reactor here and uh, it actually allows you to um, open up the lid here and add in your junk food items. So you have a banana and a soda can there uh, in a nice gold color with the proper printed um, soda can lid, which I really appreciate. Um, so yeah, all super duper accurate, really nicely done. And the ability to just um, <laughs> add the food is an, is an extra bit of deluxe uh, play feature, I think, because it just, it just makes it feel so, you know, authentic to the film where they could have just added the detail and the look of that. So uh, the Mr. Fusion logo here is a sticker, um, which you get on both sides. And then uh, I thought it was really interesting that on the inside of this, they include white Technic half uh, pins, which usually only come in blue or um, or a light bluish gray. And uh, yeah, I was just really grateful and appreciative to get three of those in the set, one of which is a spare. Um, and then, yeah, your Mr. Fusion is pretty much the only thing that you add to uh, Back to the Future to Fi it. And then, of course, you probably want to have it displayed with the wheels down like it's flying and um, there you go and then I guess now the accessories in the front you could switch out the the plutonium crate and just leave the the hoverboard in there if you're if you want to be super accurate so there's that and then for the final variation you leave the Mr. Fusion on then you add the uh, white wall tires there with the uh, the red and the silver accents in, which include four more of these uh, printed or I'm sorry uh, painted silver elements here so it's the same texture as these pieces with the dishes which I really like and then you add on this crate 
uh, and to do so you have to reconfigure the, the trunk a little bit, so a bit, or the, um, the hood. You basically just flip these um, modified um, bricks inside out. Previously the studs were facing down. Uh, and that just gives you the connection point for this massively detailed uh, crate of stuff here, which I really appreciate. I mean, they have so many things in here. There's a little um, butterbeer cup here from the, the Harry Potter line. There's another one of these great, there's actually two of these included in the set here, the, uh, the kind of shepherd's uh, stick there. And then uh, you add one of the previous um, removed ho hose pieces back into here, as well as a small, this um, ratcheted joint piece down here is another previously removed detail that you then integrate into this to create the Back to the Future 3 version. So um, it is interesting. I think I do have one minor gripe about this, which is that um, if I, say a year from now, decide to change out my, my Back to the Future uh, 3 version to the classic, I have to remember that uh, one or two of the elements were used in different places, remove some of those elements, find the old pieces, and then you know remember how to integrate all of those back. It, it, to me, it felt like um, the inclusion of a few more pieces uh, to have basically chunks that you could just entirely remove and replace would have been a better solution because I think at the end of the day, I don't mind having to switch, um, like this is no problem at all, you know, switching these around, totally fine. I, I remember to do that, that's, that's a-okay, but having to try to like dig out like which hose pipe piece detail in here is supposed to go in the back. I, I don't know, it just felt like for the inclusion of um, probably 10 additional pieces in the set, we could have had a much easier and much smoother switching of the version. So, um, you know, it's a minor gripe, but I think that given how premium everything else feels in the set and even the inclusion of uh, a couple of different new new molds, like the, uh, the windscreen is a brand new mold and also these sloped pieces at the side here, which are kind of an interesting kind of wedged angled slope that's very, very specific to the needs of this car, but also will be very useful in the future. Um, it's already getting used in the new Mandalorian, Mandalorian Starfighter um, that's coming out fairly soon. Um, so a lot of really great, useful, and very premium uh, additions to this set, as well as recolors of existing parts like this, this uh, old Technic slope in light bluish gray, which is something that I couldn't believe didn't exist before now. Um, it, it seems like such a, a given. Um, and yeah, I just felt like with all of that attention to detail and and uh, incredible levels of production work, I, I didn't know why they made us uh, disassemble and reassemble the little extra bits to convert the car. It's it's really minor, but again, that's just one gripe that I did have and I felt was a bit strange because the instruction manual um, the instruction manual kind of stops after you um, reach a certain point and then it kind of makes you choose the branch that you will go down. Um, which is interesting. Uh, so yeah, here you kind of decide which version are you going to go forward with, and then it gives you the instructions to complete the car to that to that level. And so it's kind of like if you want to go back and do the conversion, you have to kind of rethink a lot of things and go back and uh, I don't know. It's just odd in the way that it was laid out in the instructions. I th I felt, and also the the actual process of switching it around. Um, is not the easiest thing. Anyway, it's a minor gripe. The set is incredible, and that was just the one thing that kind of left me scratching my head a little bit. Um, other than that, let me just, um, actually, let me reset this to my favorite version, which is the classic one. I just absolutely love the clean look of the car from the first movie, and then we'll uh, kind of go into uh, who this is for and who I think this uh, will make happy. So who is this car for? Well, the box says that it's a, it's a 18 plus set, I don't necessarily think that that's true. I think if you have an experienced uh, builder in your house who is around the age of 14, uh, 14 or older, and they've built a lot of Lego, and in particular Technic, uh, they're gonna have no problems putting this together. It's, um, it's all very well laid out and very straightforward. There aren't any insane techniques. The only part that I think um, gave me a little bit of difficulty for a few moments was just installing these um, back kind of frame portions because they have several places that they need to click in at once and you have to really, um, you have to apply a little bit of force and dexterity to make sure that they go in at the right angle and click in multiple places. Uh, other than that, I think the actual uh, frame and the, uh, the kind of base section of it, while it is complicated and has a lot of um, tricky uh, kind of 
tricky in the sense of you're building a lot of technique that doesn't really look like anything. So it's it's kind of hard if you're new to Lego to really differentiate the parts, and and you know it's probably going to take you a while. Uh, but I really don't think that there's anything that uh, a kid aged, like I said, around 14 or older wouldn't be able to do. Uh, I know that when I was that age, um, I would have been able to put this together no problem. So I do like to use um, you know myself as a baseline because I. I was building a lot of Lego at the time, but I wasn't, you know, crazy into the hobby, and I definitely built older than my um, the recommended raid age range, and I always felt like they kind of played it safe with the age ranges. So uh, if you have a 17-year-old a that you're thinking about getting this for, don't be intimidated. They'll be just fine. Um, so secondly, back to the future fans. I think anybody who is a fan of any of the movies or all of them, um, and has any kind of nostalgia in their heart for that for that uh, movie trilogy, they're absolutely going to flip for this model. It is, it is so packed full of wonderful little details, and the minifigures are amazing to display on their own. And I think it's just, um, yeah, it captures everything that you want out of this movie series that can be captured in Lego. So, um, absolutely no question there. If you have a Back to the Future fan in your life. This is a wonderful gift to give that person. Um, and then thirdly, I think technique and Lego part enthusiasts. I, there's a lot of really, really well thought out techniques in here, things that you can really learn from, things that are just satisfying for Lego technique aficionados to, uh, to wrap their minds around. Everything uh, is built in, there's a lot of sections where you're building in every direction, in every which way to make everything fit together and it's just, I mean, it's wonderful to behold. So the, the techniques and things are, are worth learning from. It's not something you can really appreciate if you, say, download the instructions and, and look at how it's built. It's something you really have to understand by putting it together yourself. And obviously, there was enough technical challenges within this model that it facilitated the need for new molds for things like the windshield and the, uh, the side um, kind of frame here uh, for those new slope pieces. So. Uh, it's something that even the greatest LEGO experts in the world had a tough time cracking without a little bit of help. So um, definitely this is at the highest end of LEGO, um, I guess, LEGO excellence in terms of design. And so anybody who wants to emulate and learn from that, uh, highly recommend it to them as well. Um, and yeah, that's it, I think. I mean, if, if you're a car fan and you know you have a particular love for this particular vehicle for this for the DeLorean in general. I think you could build it and you could leave off some of the f more fanciful elements and have yourself a really cool car. And of, I mean, of course, there's no point doing that. It's, it's a wonderful display piece as is with all the time machine elements added to it. And if, you, if you've been collecting LEGO's large vehicle sets up until this point, I can't imagine you missing out on this one. Um, it's, I mean, it's phenomenal. So um, yeah, uh, the last thing that I wanted to kind of go over was uh, I did uh, forget to, my apologies, for the Back to the Future 2 section here, I did forget to add the license plate. I had a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a minor gripe about that too. This section here of, uh, you know, where you have to kind of remove this to, to replace uh, the license plate, it is kind of a pain to get that out, I will say, um, because it's attached, this whole section goes in here and is attached with a couple of ball joints and it's really tricky to pull it back out and I had to actually um, disassemble a lot of this stuff around it to get to that section to pull it out. So that is something I think also could have been a little bit easier and so my, uh, my other recommendation to you is basically pick the version that you want and stick to it because <laughs> um, if, you're, if you're planning to switch it out a bunch, uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt. And uh, even things like switching out the tires is, is not that bad. You know, Lego tires are a little bit of a pain to get them lined up just right, but once you swap them a few times, it's, it's not a big deal. But there are some elements like the having to disassemble and rebuild certain things uh, that will take a little bit more time. So uh, I do recommend just picking the, the one that you like best and building that and letting that be your predominant experience. Maybe build them all once and then pick the one you like and stick with that. I'm personally going to be leaving it like this and displaying it this way. And I think that the inclusion of the lightning rod was a really, really nice touch. I think it just adds so much and brings so much life to it from that particular scene. So this will be the one that I'm going to keep on display. And um, yeah, I think it's just an absolutely wonderful display piece. Uh, my only other minor gripes with this set are 
um, aesthetically speaking, I think it's essentially perfect, other than one little thing. I think that the windows, I don't know about you, but they feel a little thin to me in, in this dimension. Um, I felt like the inclusion of these sloped pieces for the, uh, the sides of the door here, um, <laughs> I don't know. It, it felt like they just went up a little high, so I, I might experiment with replacing these slopes with a single one by eight um, uh, tile and see if that does it for me. But yeah, it's, there's just something about uh, the feeling of the window frame being higher than the wing mirror and higher than the front uh, window here. It just feels off. So that's something I'll be experimenting with, but that's my only one design gripe as far as the look of the car, I think it's, other than that, I think it's basically perfection. So <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, that's about all my thoughts on this set, you guys. Uh, let me know if I missed anything in the comments. This is my first review, so I apologize for being uh, kind of rambly and not having all my thoughts organized, but there's a lot to say. This is an absolutely huge model, and I mean huge in terms of the density of what you're getting here. Um, and I guess my final thought on the subject is, should you buy this? Well, that's ultimately why we're here at the end of the day. And I think if you like the look of what you see, it's an absolute easy, no question, yes, you should buy this. Um, yeah, in my opinion, as far as Lego value goes, whatever subjective um, value you place on Lego sets, uh, I tend to look at the joy that I get out of building the thing and the joy that I tend to have out of having it on display and keeping it as, as, a, as a thing when it's done. And I think this is a 10 out of 10 um, any any little nitpicks are not enough to knock it down to that that one point to the nine out of ten. This is this is too good. It's it's unreasonable for me to expect this to be any better. It's actually it's actually perfect <laughs> in in my view as a as a Lego fan. So um, yeah, it's it's an absolute recommendation for me and for the Back to the Future fan in your life. I mean, you're going to be an absolute rock star for getting your, uh, your friends and family who love Back to the Future this Lego set for a Christmas, a birthday, or just a whatever. Um, yeah, so that's my thought. Um, so yeah, let me know if I showed you everything you wanted to see. Let me know if you agree with my thoughts. Have you got the DeLorean yourself? I know that they are kind of difficult to get your hands on. I actually had to wait and um, purchase it right as they went on sale on the evening of the day before that they were announced. They usually, Lego usually does that. They uh, it says midnight, but you know, depending on your time zone, you can grab them. So I, I got mine within the first few minutes to make sure that I got one. And um, I'm so glad that I did because it's an absolutely wonderful piece of Lego art. I mean, it, it is. It's, it's art. So that's all the thoughts that I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching along, and I'll see you on the next review. Let's play what's a print and what's a sticker. Print. Sticker. Sticker. Print. 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 Sticker. Sticker. Sticker, sticker, sticker. Sticker. Print. Down there, that one by one. Print. Sticker. Sticker. Sticker, sticker, sticker. 